there are growing concerns that unseemly battles could break out over his estate and that the Mandela legacy risks being tarnished. Despite interventions between elders from the Abatembu Royal House, close confidants and family members, to some it appears unlikely that the family feud can be resolved without recourse to the courts and legal systems. So to discuss this matter further, the question we're asking today is whether or not uh, uh, modern society and cultural practices are at odds. Could there be a clash between cultural practices and modern society? That's the question we ask today. Invited to talk about this is Chief Tandu Kolom Dikhaha, Acting Chairman of the Abatembu Royal House, Ukosi Pategi Lomisa, President of the Congress of Traditional Leaders of South Africa, Nomboni Sokasa, expert on cultural politics and gender issues. Good morning to you all and thank you very much for joining us. Good, good, good morning, good morning, good morning SAFM and thank you for holding me, for having me on the uh, program. Chief Mtikhaka and Kosi Holomisa, are you with us? Yes, I am. Good morning. A very good morning to you. Just a, a, a cautionary note to our listeners. This is a very sensitive subject. We've decided to have this conversation, not with the aim of passing judgment or expressing an opinion about these events, but more to help us learn and understand the context within which they happen. Being South African, living in a multicultural society, we are endeavoring to better understand each other's cultures and traditions. I'll first start with you, Nkosi Olomisa. This is perhaps a a very unique situation. Uh, Mandela Mandela referred to it, that the world's eyes are looking at the family and that this feud occurs during a very sensitive time. Are there any guidelines culturally or traditionally on how to deal with such a situation? (laughs) Sorry. Well, uh, it is unique only because uh, it involves the Mandela name. Otherwise, these are matters that often occur, but usually after the death of a, a leader of a household. But they don't get uh, into uh, the limelight because of the fact that uh, those uh, families are not uh, Mandela. Uh, yes, there are obviously guidelines because there will always be somebody who is the head of the family. <laughs> who has the responsibility to give guidance. And uh, if uh, he is unable to, or is not being listened to, there is also a bigger forum that will involve that will involve the bigger family, uncles and aunts of the person's concerned. And if that also doesn't uh, succeed in resolving the issue, then there is the clan. There will always be somebody who can always convene a meeting of the clan. And uh, thereafter, if the clan still cannot resolve the matter, the matter has to be taken to the traditional leadership court. Because so, Lomisa, if I could interrupt you and ask you to please explain to people who may not understand the concept of clan, who or what is the clan in this context? Uh, The clan is the broader family uh, that share a clan name, such as in this case Madiba or Shomo. That is the that is the name of the clan of the family uh, we're talking about today. Uh, the people who share that name, who are common descendants, who have a descendant of a common uh, ancestor. Chief Mtikhaka. Yes. Con- yes, you can continue. I was say, saying then, after the clan <clears throat> has not been able to resolve the matter, it has to be taken to the court of the traditional leader. Then the court of the traditional leader is expected to give an objective decision because it is constituted now of not only members of that clan but other clans in the community as well. If I could ask you to just briefly explain to us, when you say an objective opinion, how would that be arrived at? Well, uh, the parties concerned will be given an opportunity to express themselves openly by themselves, not represented by anyone else like, uh, for instance, uh, lawyers. And then everybody who is there will be in a position to examine and cross-examine all the witnesses, again, openly, without any restrictions. The only restriction being that they must be polite and they must not insult anybody uh, in that forum. Chief Mtikhaka, just to, to come to you, the 
the legitimacy of uh, certain members of the family were questioned yesterday and it raises the questions obviously different ethnic groupings have different ways of doing things uh, you find a matriarchy and some a patriarchy and others uh, although not so much a, a matriarchy but uh, are women able to take the lead in such conversations or is it clearly stipulated who should speak on what and when Uh, okay, uh, good morning, uh, uh, Benga, and the listeners as uh, a whole. <coughs> I think at uh, 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 this instance, uh, it, uh, the, the family or uh, the, the, the main uh, family of the Mandela uh, clan or Mandela as a family are the sole and responsible uh, persons who are eligible to, to discuss uh, the issues like this one. So in this instance now, as I'm saying now, the, the Mandela uh, family seemingly have uh, a certain discuss this issue, and uh, uh, seemingly they they, uh, they did not uh, uh, agree on each other. Hence now we have heard it on the media that is on the newspaper, because if they they, they, they should have uh, I mean understood each understood each other, they should have done that uh, without going to to the court. So I'm saying now, if there is the main uh, Mandela uh, 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 family, who are the persons to, to discuss this issue? And failing which, what should have happened? As uh, Nkosi Olomisa has just explained, but you, you spoke about the yeah. media, yes. and, uh, and yes. you're saying this is a reality we can't ignore. Yes, I, I think uh, uh, Chief Ngozi uh, Uolomisa is right uh, by saying if now the, the, the Mandela family now uh, 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 it does not read a uh, consensus, there is a, a bigger forum now, like uh, the, the forum now of uh, the, the Madiba clan, because Mandela in, I mean, was not born, and for instance, Mandela uh, was born by Ngube Nuka uh, uh, with his brothers, Mutika, Kajoi, and Mnaneni. So now, if the Mandela family now does not reach a, a consensus, they have now to, 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 to go further, I mean, to, to, to the extended family, that is now the, the Madiba clan. In this instance, they should have gone to the Mtikata house as the great house of the Abatim. I mean, for that house now, or for that family to intercede in the, in the, in the Mandela family. Then... In turn, the Mkikaka family would call Mandela, Maneni, and join, and then they'll sit down and discuss the issue. Uh, maybe now they'll reach now an amicable uh, argument. Ms. Gasa, you are uh, an expert on cultural politics and gender issues. And uh, if we look at the Mandelas, they are a, a, a large family, but who have had a very, should I say, uh, very interesting upbringing, brought up in different places, different influences, internationally so as well. A great deal of attention being paid on them at the moment. Uh, Nkosi Olomisa was speaking about how within the co- Congress of Traditional Leaders, should the matter be brought to them, the, they would represent themselves and not be represented by lawyers. And I suppose that's the question we're asking today, whether cultural practices or tradition are at odds with modern society? Well, first and foremost, thank you very much for, 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 for having me on the program, um, particularly with um, sharing the platform with your esteemed guests. I want to make it very clear from the onset that I do not want to discuss what the Mandela family should have done or should not have done. Um, I will only, to the extent that it is necessary, refer to it as a broader indication of what we understand by the place of culture um, and its role and customary practices. This is in indeed the intention. In this is indeed the intention, yeah. and I think that's so why I said I, that I in the beginning. I want to make that very clear. So um, every family as uh, Ngosu Olomisa has said, does in fact have these kinds of um, contradictions and sometimes really 
conflictual relationships. And um, some families do, in fact, end in court. And some families do not. Now, the process that has been outlined uh, is a process that um, all of us would agree is an ideal process had it been started when there was enough time. And um, clearly, uh, you know, I will leave it to the Gubengukas, the Mnanganis, the Mtikakas, and the Mandelas to discuss why um, this has evolved in this way. But I want to make three key issues that have emerged in this. One, um, it is very clear that there are times when um, what we call African customary uh, uh, forms of resolution are not able um, to resolve issues to the extent that everybody would like them to, for a number of reasons. One of those you've alluded to being different cultural upbringings. The other, of course, being that, um, and I want to make this very clear, that often the elders of the family, uh, both at the level of the clan and at the, and, and at the larger level, are not coming from outer space themselves. So their views um, are also, in some ways, part of what can resolve issues, but also part of what can, in fact, um, make it difficult to resolve issues. Now, we do not know in this particular case whether had all those processes been followed, uh, that uh, you know th- those resolutions mm. would have would have come up. Mm. Yeah, m- now, m- I want to take the issue, which for me is the issue that um, everybody is talking about, that is taking this outside of the family and going to court. In terms of South African constitution, in terms of uh, your critical um, question which is the the relationship between culture and modern society. If we remove ourselves and our own emotions in terms of whether we think this should have ended in court or not, and we simply look at it as a family right now, as, as it happens in our own families, as a family that has not been able to resolve these issues through these means, and therefore they have gone to court, the South African constitution if we talk about culture and modern society, does not, in fact, preclude going to court as one of the remedies that can be sought by any member of the family. And going to court, would that include a traditional court? Uh, that would include a traditional court. It would also include the kind of court that they've gone to. I am sticking specifically on what the Constitution provides so we've mm-hmm. got to be very careful that we do not pit um, the, 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 the you know the, the court system uh, against the traditional court system. I understand that they would use a different logic um, as they have in the in the high court. I understand that it is always best to to, to resolve customary issues using customary law. Now even in the High Court in Mtata, I do believe that they could have, in fact, um, this is now our justice system, they could have used customary law even in that court. There's nothing that prohibits that.